there, it's been a while since I sat down and spoke to the camera. Um, sorry it's been so long. I did apologise in the last video because um, I only just edited that, even though I filmed it six months ago and I hadn't been around for a few months before that. I am back. I have just finished three years at university and I don't get my grade till September. So, well, I think we've all been in a bit of a frenzy since lockdown started and that's part of the reason I lost motivation to do things. Um, but now that I have put a full stop at my coursework, I can now allow myself to start thinking creatively for myself and my own business without having to keep jumping back to my coursework. And that's kind of why I've been holding myself off because I knew that I would get really kind of disheartened if I had to keep stopping myself doing the things that I really enjoy for uni work. I have enjoyed my third year thoroughly, but obviously when you're in an education establishment, there's boxes you have to tick and you have to do things in a specific way. Even though there is freedom in your third year, you still have to do it a specific way. And you can't just go, I'm gonna do this today because I feel like it. You have to have a reason and document and sketchbook, blah, 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 blah. So I first want to talk about my t-shirt, which is this beautiful Be Kind t-shirt. I'm not sponsored. This is a top from the lovely lady I've talked about before, um, Becky, AKA Rebecca Bruton Textiles. She has recently brought out a tea mill store where she sells her textiles prints on t-shirts and they are absolutely gorgeous. You can see the fabric and the stitches on the prints. They're really soft, they're good price. And most importantly, they are eco-friendly. And of course they support an artist. So I'm gonna link that in the description because I think it's really important to support artists and I absolutely love my t-shirt. So that's just something I wanted to talk about because I'll probably be wearing this t-shirt for most of the video. But I have an exciting new venture that I am starting and I just wanted to share it with you all because I like sharing my journeys and now that I get to do them properly, I'm gonna throw it out there. So, So this is my new toy. Um, I definitely wanted to get one more expensive than this and more high end, but at the moment I can't afford that. So I have bought this one to fulfill my needs of um, experimenting and finding a style within tufting. And hopefully I can start making some things to sell and earn some money towards buying a proper one. But this will probably, if it works well, this will stay with me for a while um, as one day I hope to teach workshops and if it works well for the basics, it'd be good to use it. So, if you don't know what this is, this is a tufting gun and I've wanted one of these for a while. I've been following the community created by Tim Eads in America for a while. I wanted to buy one of his tufting guns in America, but the shipping is really expensive. So I'm gonna save up, and I think he suggests another company in the UK. <coughs> Currently, I don't have a frame because we're converting um, our sort of like spare downstairs room um, into a studio for me. And my dad is gonna help me build a wooden frame with carpet grippers so that I can make rugs or wall hangings up on there. But for now, I'm going to use the canvas frame that I mentioned in a couple videos ago to um, stretch some of the tuffling cloth over and I'm gonna use clamps to keep it in place and give it a go. And I'm really excited and I hope it goes well, but who knows. I tried tufting in uni because I knew it was something I wanted to do, but it's an expensive piece of equipment and I didn't want to just go in blind um, if there was a workshop locally, I probably would have gone to that as well, but I was lucky that this workshop was free through uni. Um, and um, that was obviously a more high tech piece of equipment because it was from the uni. It was one that uses the air pump as well as electric. I practiced there and it was really, really fun, but obviously a three hour workshop between three people is um, a lot more crowded and you don't get to really experiment. I'm excited to figure out my style 
and play around with shapes and colours and find some cool things to make. I am really hoping that this works because if not I am hopefully going to be able to return it. This was the best one I could find. I was looking at one that was cut and loop pile but the heights of each of them weren't really adjustable. There was not really a range within them. So this one is just cut pile and there is a larger range of height that I can use, which I think will be more useful to me. And um, I'd rather spend a bit less money on just cut pile with better range of heights than it was about hundred pound more for one with cut and loop pile. It, I just feel like I'm gonna earn the money back from this quicker and save up for a better piece of equipment. So that's where we're at. I'm gonna go give this a go. I'll show you how I'm stretching up my canvas. I don't think I'm gonna draw out a design because I'm just gonna try and fill out a square. <sighs> Let's go. So I'm gonna do some close-ups of it. Now, this is my concern when it came. This looks really flimsy and I'm quite concerned about that. So I'm hoping that it goes okay. But of course you get what you pay for, so I decided to go for a cheaper piece of equipment at the beginning of my tufting journey. So as you can see, as I spin it, that's how it tufts. Um, I am going to do a bit of um, playing around to figure out how this all works. Now, um, I believe that some of the things that are shown from other tufting guns will apply to this one in terms of changing the height. This handle spins all the way around so that as you're tufting, you can keep the support with this handle so that you can keep it flat and supported whilst you, you know, do different shapes and go up and down. Um, what, a couple things that I have learned from my tufting induction in uni. Um, now this one's different because the one in uni had um, a trigger that sort of, you could ease the pressure on and off, but this one feels like it's just gonna be on or off, which means that there's one speed. That is an immediate concern for me because I don't want it to go too fast. So we're just gonna have to see how that goes. But um, you have to put a fair amount of pressure onto the fabric with the tufting gun. And that was the difficult thing in uni was you had to keep light pressure on the button, but a lot of force on the fabric. The other thing is that you have to keep it at around about a 90 degree angle. If you're going like this, you're not putting the right pressure onto the screen and it's not going to tough nicely. So it can be quite tough on your shoulders. And the best thing, you don't want to go up too high and you don't want to go down too low. You want to keep it around your chest height. Um, so we're going to go and give this a, a try. So I'm just down in the corner here because the first thing I want to do is check that this works. So before I have any wool around me, I've, before I've clamped everything, I need to check that it works. So I've plugged it in, there's a red light on the back. Now the switch is off currently, so. So this large battery pack back here makes a high pitched noise when I push on the button, which is a bit of a concern. So I'm really nervous. <laughs> Okay, that's really fast. That concerns me slightly. Okay, thing is, I don't know how fast that is until I get it tufting. So I am gonna look and see if there's any way you can slow it down. But I think the first thing is to celebrate, hang on, turn it off. The first thing to celebrate is that this works and that is number one I'm really happy with. Now I have to figure out, because this doesn't have a tufting yarn channel like the one at uni had, because this is a different tufting gun. So I'm gonna have to figure out where the yarn goes. It definitely goes out here, but how I get it in there is another question. I don't know if it just comes over the top and comes out there. Surely it has to go in somewhere else as well. We're going to just do some general reading. I am going to attach all of the like forums and everything that I use if you're interested in getting into tufting as well. But the reason I'm sharing this in these stages is because I think it's really important to show that everyone starts somewhere. And I'm hoping that in time, I'll be really good at advising people on tufting and 
generally be a good tufting artist. In general words. But basically I just want to document this part because this is the beginning of a new chapter for me as an artist. So I think it's important for me to showcase that everyone goes through those early stages of making mistakes and figuring things out. I've done the same with my weaving journey. That first video I posted, I had no idea what I was doing. I was just following things online. And I think we're really lucky to have these amazing resources and forums and books to look at and find things out. And it makes art a lot more accessible for everyone. And I think that that's fantastic. So this is the beginning of my tufting journey. And um, let's see how this goes. So just to run over the things that I have, um, I, so I, cause I don't have a full tufting frame yet, I'm gonna be using this frame. And because I'm UK based, I bought some tufting fabric from a UK based company because shipping from America is really expensive and I wanted to make sure that I got some proper tufting cloths so that I'm not setting myself back already by buying the wrong thing. And then because I don't want to ruin this frame in case I want to use it for something else in the future, I don't want to put carpet grippers on it like I will with my big frame, which will be specifically for tufting. So my dad found these clips at his lockup, which are like small clamps and they should work quite nicely. I've got a big box of them. Um, I was hoping to get some big ones, but because there's so many of the small ones, I think I'll be okay. But I recommend if you're gonna do the same method as me and you only want clamps and not carpet grippers, then I suggest looking for some big ones of these, but I'll let you know if these work. And then finally, I have some yarn. So I went on to Airedale Yarns and I've been wanting to buy from them for ages and this was the perfect excuse. So I bought some of their yarn, which is specifically for weaving and they even say that it is for tufting. So I'll link that in the description. I bought a few colors, I think I bought six colors. I bought like three orangey style ones and three bluey green colors, which should all work together, but also I can use them separately. And then I also have some leftover four ply warp yarn from my uni project. I use this as the warp for my trousers and I also use it in matching as well. And I have got two cones of this left. So I've got this one and I've got the bigger one as well. So what I can do is put these two together into the tufting gun and tuft two at a time and that should work with the thicknesses because one of the really fun things with tufting is that you don't just have to use one yarn at a time, you can double up, but of course, if you're gonna do that, you need to make sure that you don't exceed the width that the tufting gun can handle. So now I'm gonna see if this works. And of course, first things first, I'm gonna clamp this onto the frame. And what I'm gonna do is to start off with, I'm just gonna try tufting a couple lines close to the edge not too close though, because I don't want to hit the frame, with no yarn in, because I don't want to waste any yarn, and I just want to check the speed that it's going to work at. Now, I don't know how well this is going to work whilst I'm sat on the floor, but that is kind of the best option, because there's no way that I could put this somewhere standing up higher where it's secure. I might be able to get it on the chair. We're just going to have to see. Okay, so I've got quite a few clamps on here. It feels the sort of tension that it was at uni. Um, now, one thing I will say is that I'm a bit concerned about doing this and I'm not doing this too much. I'm gonna get my frame built as soon as possible because I think the best thing is the carpet grippers, which give tension all the way around, whereas these obviously only grab onto certain points. But it seems okay. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position myself here, um, make sure I'm quite supported. I'm probably going to bring my legs in like this so that this frame stays as secure as possible. And we're going to work here just to see how quick this goes and see, you know, how sorted we are. So since I took the tufting gun out and tried it, um, I found that I'm pretty certain that this is where it goes. But from the looks of most people's tufting guns, they have usually got a loop here that the yarn feeds through. So that's a concern in terms of how well this is going to feed through. I am going to take another look on the listing. The issue is the listing was very sparse, but I think it might just end up being a little bit of trial and error. So yeah. The other thing is Jack is behind the camera and he hasn't been in the room when I tried this before. So I have a feeling he's going to bark. You okay with it? Okay, I thought so. No, it's nice. It's a nice tufting gun. too bad. And just like that, Jack doesn't care anymore. I think that the next step is just to try some yarn. Right, let's just have that, that see what happens if we... Okay, I finally got the yarn through the front of the needle. I have looked on the listing and there should be the metal coil here that you see on basically every tufting gun. So I've contacted them and I'm gonna see what they can do. But if not, I might have to set something up, maybe like a zip tie with a coil or something there. It took ages to get it through there because what usually they have is just an eye and you can just pull it through with um, some sort of paper clip or something. But this is really thin. So I've had to use one of the zip ties that came around the cord. And after a few attempts, I finally got it through. So now we're gonna try and see how this goes. too much of the fabric i just want to check that this works i'm gonna look up some tutorials for cut and loop pile guns and see if you need to move the blade further forward um, and maybe that's why it did loop pile and maybe this does loop and cut pile worst case scenario this is a loop pile gun and i'm just gonna make loop pile pieces for now and then do cut pile in the future um, it definitely says on the listing that it is cut pile so we're gonna have to figure that out. So first things first, this was fine. Um, I definitely think that you can tell that it's not clamped all the way around. You can see that literally between the clamps it is trying to pull inwards obviously. And there has been a sort of dip formed here. But I think for my first attempt that I've kept the tension quite good. I think that 
Um, this is my first line. You can see here, I think I was too light there, but I think I've kept a good pressure for my first go solo. Now I'm gonna flip it around and we're gonna have a look at the other side. So I'm actually really chuffed with how this looks. Um, I think that my spacing was all right um, in terms of the how wide apart each line is. I think you can see that my pressure was not even and that's okay. I wasn't expecting it to be great, not only on my first go alone after closer to a year of my first try in a workshop. Um, there are some loops that are a bit loose, but that's okay. I think I might need to move a bit quicker as well. I think I was going too slow, which is fine. And one thing I will say is I'm actually really happy with the height of this. And this feels like it could be a good rug, which is the, you know, what I wanted from this. So that's a really good sign. And I think that what's holding me back here, and this is why I'm not going to be doing any more tufting until I have a frame set up, I definitely think I need the carpet grippers for an even edge. So we'll see what happens. We're going to have to look at how long it can be until I can get a tufting frame and potentially get some carpet grippers for this, for the interim. And that can also be something that I make smaller pieces on. We're just going to have to see because obviously this setup in terms of the clamps and also the fact that this frame has to be lent on the floor against the chair. Those two are not ideal, but I think that, you know, I'm really happy with my first attempt. I think this is great. I'm gonna leave this as it is and then put this up on the tufting frame when I get it sorted. And I will probably latex that and keep that as my first sample or maybe even work on from it and continue and not waste that and make it part of, you know, my first piece, which hopefully will show at least some progression as I learn, figure out everything. And that obviously would be something I keep myself. I hope that you have found this at least somewhat interesting. This is my new venture. Of course, weaving will not be going anywhere. I will be continuing with some scarves and things, and I'll probably upload some sort of chill content where I don't talk at all. And it's just some relaxing weaving videos. I don't know when we're going to be starting to put some of my stuff in the room. Hopefully it's going to be soon and then you'll see the tufting frame being made. Hopefully my floor loom will go up. We're just going to kind of see how that goes and figure it out as we go. I am going to leave this video there because I don't know when the next step will be and I don't want to end up like my last video where it took ages for me to get more content. So I'm going to finish this video here. But if you want to see more frequent updates from me, I upload to my Instagram grid quite frequently and I'm very active on my stories, showing you what I'm up to each day or most days. My grid posts also go straight to my Facebook page. So if you don't have Instagram, you can follow me on Facebook and see my Instagram posts there. I'm hoping to get a tufting frame sorted soon. So you will hopefully see more tufting content soon. And just like I said, with my weaving content, there will be some tufting videos where it's just me and my tufting gun and some chill music. And perhaps there will be some hand latching as well because since doing that for my uni project, I've really got into it. I obviously made the rug, which I shared on my Instagram. So I might be making myself a wall piece for my bedroom. And if so, I'll be ordering all that stuff soon and I'll probably do some time lapses and things. Basically now, because I finished uni, I'm gonna be able to do some creative endeavors that I've wanted to do for a while, but just could not give myself the time without feeling guilty about not doing coursework. So subscribe down below and you will be notified of when some new content that I create comes out. You can hit the bell as well, which will send you an email and proper notifications when I post. I really am hoping to do this more frequently because I really like sharing my creative stuff and it's really exciting to share these opportunities with you. So let's hope that we can get some more tufting stuff sorted soon and I will see you in the next video. Bye!